Hello guys and welcome to my September empties and book review. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys my empties from the month of September I finished off. A heck of a lot of stuff as well as reviewing the four books that I read in September with you and I will say my Goodreads account is finally like public and I can share it with you guys so if you do want to follow me on Goodreads or friend me on Goodreads it is goodreads.com slash hi it's Vicky so just putting that out there because I know there's been a lot of questions I honestly did not know how it worked so I figured it out and there you are. All right, let's start with empties. We're gonna do candles first. So the first one that I have is Homework's Affogato Espresso. This one was really fun. I loved this coffee scent from Homeworks. It burned super well. Was a super simple coffee scent, much less espresso than Paris Cafe from Bath & Body Works. It was much more coffee-like, and I really enjoyed it for that. So the notes on this were hot espresso, vanilla bean gelato, almond milk, and warm spices. I didn't really get any like ice cream note in this. I did get a little bit of vanilla. It was just like a simple vanilla coffee, like a coffee with some creamer in it. And it was really nice. It was exactly what I wanted out of it. And then I also finished off Bath & Body Works Champagne Apple and Honey. I'm sad that I finished this off like the first week of September because this is my September scent. It is the scent of the month for me. It is my transition into fall. And I'm so sad that I finished it so quickly. I was just really excited to bring it out. And I think I only had like half of it left from last year. The notes are crisp apple, sparkling champagne, and jasmine honey. This will always be a repurchase for me. Also, please ignore my nails. I really need to do them. I just haven't had time to sit down and do them yet. And the last candle that I finished is this single wick and sugared snickerdoodle, which is funny that I pulled out like a Christmas scent in fall. I don't, I don't know but I lost this candle and then I randomly found it underneath my sink in the bathroom. So I was like, let me just try it out. And it was so yummy. The notes are warm spice, creamy vanilla and sugared musk. This one was nice to have going. If I had visitors coming to the house, I would leave this in the bathroom and it just smelled so good. It smelled like freshly baked cookies. It was amazing. Next, we're gonna move on to some hand soaps. I finished off mahogany vanilla and then I also finished off strawberry pound cake. Wonderful scents, great for year round, and really enjoyed them. I did pretty good on body care this month and I finished off quite a bit. So the first one is Wild Madagascar Vanilla in the Body Lotion. This was in my summer project Use It Up. The notes are Wild Madagascar Accord, African Pear, and Wild Jasmine. It was very jasmine heavy, not vanilla heavy, which is what I was expecting. So I probably wouldn't pick this up again because I was really hoping for more of like a vanilla scent than anything else but it was still good i enjoyed it and i could see how other people would like it it just wasn't really for me and then i also finished up whipped coconut milkshake in the body cream this one was really good super gourmand coconut it was just a milky vanilla -y coconut and it was amazing the notes are vanilla ice cream toasted coconut and sugared amber and then in my fall project use it up i finished off marshmallow pumpkin latte in the foaming sugar scrub really happy to be done with this one because marshmallow pumpkin latte is not my favorite scent it's something about this marshmallow note that just doesn't do it for me. It's not the same as Bonfire Bash to me. Sorry if you can hear this bird. He is right outside of my window. Anyways, the notes are pumpkin latte, toasted marshmallows, and creamy sandalwood. Yeah, this one just like doesn't do it for me, so I'm happy to have it out of my collection. I didn't cut it open to finish it because I just, I'm not interested in this scent, so I'd rather just start using something else. So, finish that one. I also finished a little pocket back in blackberries and basil. Really nice, simple scent. And then I finished the Replica Autumn Vibes little mini perfume. I liked this one a lot. I think it was fun. I'm not like obsessed with it. I don't think I would ever purchase a full size, but it was nice, kind of an intro into fall scent. I did end up finishing off one Scentsy Bar in Dutch Apple Bread. I really need to work through my Scentsy Fall collection because I have a lot of fall and Halloween fragrances left over from last year. So I feel like October is gonna be a big wax month especially for candles too. I finished off a couple of makeup items. First one being the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I really like this. I got this from one of my friends. Actually, she gave it to me, so thank you, JC. Um, but this is just a clear brow gel. It worked really well. I like this um, applicator. It is like flat, flat on one side, but fat on the other. So it was nice to like lay down the hairs and brush them up. Really enjoyed that. I would probably pick up this one again, maybe in a color this time. And then I also finished off the e.l.f. lip stain in Pinkies Up. This one I've only had for a few months, to be honest, and it dried out really quickly, or I guess I used it quickly. 
It is so tiny. It's 0.1 fluid ounces. I don't even think there was that much product in here. Like, I don't know how much is in here, but I went through it super quick. So I still think this is like $6. I don't think it's worth it because I got through it so quickly. So I don't know. The color was pretty. I liked it, but I don't feel like it's worth it because it it ran out really, really quick. I did finish off a couple hair items. First is the Living Proof Scalp Care Dry Scalp Treatment. I love this stuff. I will continue to repurchase it. I haven't yet because I tried to go to Sephora the other day and they were already closed. So I need to order this online so I can have a nice healthy scalp again because I'm already starting to get some psoriasis patches on the crown of my head and I hate it. And then I finished off this Andrew Fitzsimmons 10-in-1 Leave-In Conditioner. So I got this in a gift set for Christmas time actually. I love the Ulta gift sets, especially for hair care around the Christmas time because they always have really good stuff for great prices and I will purchase it like one a year and use them on all my trips. So I really liked this. Um, I don't think I'd pick it up because it is kind of expensive, but it was a good leave-in conditioner. And then I finished off my favorite Joico Moisture Recovery shampoo and conditioner. I picked these up from Marshall slash TJ Maxx because they are like half the price that they regularly are. And I love this for my dry hair. And the last empty I have is my Mary Kay Clinical Solutions PHA AHA Resurfacer. This is an acid. I use it about once a week. So my routine will be like acid, retinol, break, break. Acid, retinol, break, break. So that's kind of my skincare routine for night times. And I really enjoyed this stuff. I'm gonna have to pick up a another one. So that's it for all of my empties. If you stayed for this much, thank you so much. You don't have to watch my book review, but if you would like to, then just keep watching. I do have to say my shirt today is from Aerie. I really, really like it. It's so cute. I am also wearing Rum Raisin on my lips from Revlon, and these earrings are from Etsy. I got them a few years ago when I went to Disneyland during the month of October because it was decorated for Halloween and I really love them. I haven't worn them in a while. So now we are going to talk about the four books that I read in the month of September. I've been doing pretty good and reading about four to five books a month. So I feel like that's a really good sweet spot for me. So I did end up reading three audiobooks and one real book. I do really want to get a Kindle sometime soon. Um, but yeah, I've just been reading audiobooks mainly on the Libby app from my library because they are free. So the first book that I read in the month of September is The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Mariana Zapata, and I gave this one three stars. Honestly, to me, I was looking for a football romance because I really wanted to celebrate the start of NFL and SEC football season because I am a big football fan. So I was really looking forward to having some sort of football romance and feeling like I was at the football games with the character and stuff. And that just wasn't this book at all. And I was really disappointed by it. So we have our main character, Vanessa, and she goes by Van. And she is the assistant to a NFL football player pretty much for the Dallas Cowboys, but they use different names in this universe because I think maybe the author can't use the Dallas Cowboys as like their name. Aiden Graves is a defense, some sort of defense, defensive position and he's like really renowned in the industry and he is a very focused NFL football player and she is his assistant and she's been his assistant for like two years or something and he pretty much just ignores, ignores her and like pushes her around and stuff. And one day she finally decides to quit because she saved up enough money. And then he's like, wait, I can't live without you. But to me, there was not enough romance build up in here. It was more like a protective vibe, but I didn't really get that she liked him because he liked her, but she said every now and then that she thought he was attractive, but I got nothing else from that. That was it. So yeah, I feel like the romance wasn't fully fleshed out. There was no spice actually. There was zero spice. I think they kissed once maybe twice in the entire book. So that for me was just not, it was not it. There was no football, it was disappointing. Um, it was still kind of entertaining. So I gave it a three star, but honestly I'm feeling like I should take it down to a two star because now that I'm thinking about it, yeah, it just wasn't it for me. So if you have a football romance, let me know down below because I would love to read one. Next, I read The X Hex by Aaron Sterling and this one was so much fun. So I gave this one a four stars. I really, really liked it for like the Halloween vibes. I honestly should have saved this one for like the week of or the week before Halloween. So if you don't have this on your list, put it on, uh, like get on the wait list at your library so you can get this around Halloween time. 
because it was so fun. Um, the author does a really good job of like making you feel like you're in the town and the town is decorated and they have this like fair and she details the characters walking through the scenes in the town where there's lights hung up, there's jack-o'-lanterns in the window. She just really kind of gives you the vibes that it's Halloween time and it felt really nice and cozy. So we have our main character, Vivian, which now I'm just realizing that I read two books last month that started with the female main character starting with a V name, which is very rare, I feel like. Anyways, um, we have Vivian, who is our resident witch, and she lives in this like small town in Georgia, in the Georgian mountains. And we have Reese Penthallow, but Reese Penthallow is from a long prestigious line of warlocks, but they don't call them warlocks in this world, but he's a male witch and his family founded the town that they're set in and they used to date a long time ago and she accidentally hexed him um, which they didn't believe in it <laughs> so we come back to i think like 10 years later and they still have really good chemistry together they honestly broke up for a stupid reason but they were like 18 and 19 at the time so it kind of made sense to break up for a stupid reason because they were so young but they still have really good chemistry when he comes back to the town to celebrate that year's like Halloween festivities and like restore the magic to the town. And she is a professor and this school also teaches magic, which was really cool. I loved the hex part of the story. I feel like the story was actually really good and fully fleshed out. And there was also a little bit of spice in this book. I would say like maybe two and a half to three chili peppers out of five. I feel like this was the perfect amount of romance, banter, and spice, and it made perfect sense. So I definitely would consider reading the next, I think there's two more books in the X-Hex trilogy, and I think the third one just came out. So I'm definitely going to put those on my list to read hopefully next month or maybe next year, but I really enjoyed the X-Hex. I would definitely recommend it. I think it was super cute cozy for Halloween and a really fun romance vibe. Also with like the witchy elements, it just made a lot of sense. It was really fun. And the third book that I read this month was Reckless by Lauren Roberts. This is the second book in her trilogy. So the first book was Powerless and then she had a novella in between and that was Powerful. And then this one is Reckless. So Powerless, I liked a lot. I gave it a four star rating. Um, powerful. I liked even more. I gave it a five star rating. So going into this book, I had high hopes and it kind of fell flat, to be honest. So I gave this one three and a half stars. The plot in this one just takes forever to get there. I feel like it's going to be worth it for the next book. But for this book, it just took forever. It dragged on so much. And there was only like a couple scenes that really kept me going every like 100 pages or so. We would get some actual plot in there and we would get some sort of like dire circumstance where they would have to work together, our main characters. So I don't know, it just was, it felt like a filler episode to me. Um, it didn't really make sense. And then like the last 30 pages, it finally picked up a little bit of pace. So yeah, it wasn't very enjoyable. Um, there was a few scenes that I really enjoyed. I mean, I'm a Kai lover. I love the male main character Kai. So I really just kept reading it for him. But yeah, I'm interested to see when the third book comes out, how she picks it up from there because I feel like this book was just like a filler. That's what it felt like while I was reading it. It just felt like a filler book, so. And the last book that I read in the month of September is That Time I Got Drunk and Needed a Love Potion at a Werewolf. It's a very long title by Kimberly Lemming. And this is book two in a, her series. Um, but from the reviews that I read, it said that you could read it standalone. But it kind of didn't make sense. So maybe I should have read it, read the first one first. Um, I gave this one three stars because it really was kind of weird. Um, it was funny. Yes, it was goofy and silly. Yes, there was banter. I loved it. And I really enjoyed our male, our female main character, Brie. Um, the male main character, Felix, kind of just, like, I don't know, their romance didn't really make sense to me. Um, so obviously you can tell the werewolf got a love potion thrown at him and he fell in love with her. It's kind of the whole plot of the story. You would see that if you read, like, the description. So I'm not spoiling anything. That was the, like, main plot. But there was a side plot that was, like, kind of just confusing. 
um and it felt super rushed we didn't get that side plot until like maybe 75 percent of the way through the book and then it was like really insane okay it was like really insane kidnappings and like gods and goddesses and stuff and like people trying to take over the world it was like came out of nowhere which maybe it would make more sense if i read book one but yeah that kind of just came out of nowhere for the first three quarters of the book we were just worried about getting the werewolf out of the love spell and then all of a sudden this other plot came in and it just felt super rushed and crazy um and also the spicy scenes were hella spicy and not in a good way it was like six out of five chili peppers and it was weird okay it was weird especially their first time having intercourse was so odd i didn't even want to listen to it i read this as an audiobook and it was just weird so i don't know maybe her writing style of the romance scenes are just not it for me but it didn't feel like their relationship grew at all during the story um he just fell in love with her and she just kind of like put up with it i don't know it didn't really feel good to me so i'm kind of also considering bringing this down to a two star um, I'm being a little generous because I feel like I kind of missed something from the first book. But yeah, it was like a, like a little too weird. I would not recommend it to any of my friends. It was so weird. I'm surprised I didn't just not finish it. But I think it was only like a six hour book. So it was really quick. Most of the books that I read are like 11 to 15 hours. So it was a quick read. It was funny. It was silly. It was goofy. But it was also really odd. Um, taking that one off of my fall TBR recommended. Okay taking it off. So anyways, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. And I will have a book reading vlog coming out soon. So look forward to that. And I will talk to you all in my next video. Bye.